Hello learners and welcome to yet another session. And in this session, we're going to talk about sponsorship and brand association. What is sponsorship and how does it impact uh, events and their association with brands? How do brands perceive events as an opportunity? And what should events or event managers do to achieve a right balance between bringing brands on board and creating a formidable association? So let's dive in and look at some of uh, the concepts of sponsorship and brand association. As they say, to sell stars, you need to shine bright. Sponsorship and brand association is all about selling your stars, your events to a potential client. And unless they're shining bright and they're outshining the others, it's very difficult to bring in an association with a brand. So it's critical that we look at sponsorship as an opportunity where we engage with brands, we engage and bring them on board to buy into the experience that events are trying to sell to a like-minded consumer who potentially is also a prospect for the brand. So what is sponsorship? When it all began in the olden times, sponsorship was a term devised to patronize an initiative. Often the rich and famous would dole out charity uh, to institutions, to foundations, to associations, to trusts, to social and community organizations so that they could get acknowledgement, so that uh, they could get known in the community, so that they would be known for their uh, gregariousness or uh, their benevolence and uh, how they could earn social goodwill. So whenever money was given away or uh, anything in kind was given away, to an organizer, it was perceived that this was coming as a charitable benevolence, which was done by the sponsor or by the person who was giving the money, enabling the organization to acknowledge that this money would be utilized to execute the event. But at the same time, they would take that opportunity in the event to thank the uh, sponsor and tell him how uh, grateful they were because uh, it was his benevolence, it was his money that enabled the event to happen. As times evolved, sponsorship was solicited by organizers of sports, musicals, performing arts, uh, theater, etc. against the opportunity for brands and clients to get associated with an event. This would earn the brand social goodwill uh, people would recognize it as a, a good corporate citizen. Uh, it was also helping the brand in generating a positive CSR. Uh, also, commercial recognition uh, in the form of branding, in the form of presence, in the form of logos would uh, set the attendees to take and look up and take notice of the brand who was sponsoring it. And of course, that's how uh, the events in the olden time were perceived. The word sponsorship was still perceived as a semi-charity initiative until the early 90s, uh, where brands started perceiving events as valid engagements of commercial purpose. So it was here that the brand started asking about what is the reach? Uh, how many people will this engage? How many will be offline? How many will be online? Where all will my brand be seen? Uh, how will the brand be perceived by people? Uh, what kind of audiences will get engaged? Who is your target group? This became a evolution and a turnaround where sponsorships slowly became uh, a different term. And today, uh, if you look at the sponsorship scenario, it's a far more different and far more complex arrangement between organizers of events and brands than what it was earlier. So uh, sponsorship and its sales were still relegated in the early 90s to you know, branding opportunities 
sampling to live audiences, logo presence in commercial mainstream media like hoardings and ads and papers and radio commercials and TV commercials. But there was nothing really tangible except the physical event, which had a limited uh, number of attendees. And here was the challenge where when I looked at the cost per acquisition for a brand, it became difficult for event companies to justify the amount that was being asked for sponsorship. So while uh, the ticket size of uh, the sponsorship was a huge amount, uh, eventually the number of people that attended the event live and actually experienced the brand messaging in some way or the other uh, and would have an opportunity to recall that brand were not so large enough to justify the cost of acquisition. And that's the turnaround or the turning point as I would determine which changed the entire business for a very, very long time to come. So what is the context of sponsored events? Today's events are all about engagement and immersiveness. Events are about building communities and talking to them about their likes. Uh, it's all about telling people, hey, what's, what's, what's the color that you like the most? Or what's the uh, smell or essence that you like the most? Or what is the most favorite thing that you like to eat? Or uh, what entertains you? So communities are built around various planks. It could be social, it could be economic, it could be uh, cultural, it could be interests, it could be ambitions, it could be aspirations, it could be dreams. Communities around the world where, which are participating in events, whether it is music, art, sports, performing uh, arts, culture, literature, uh, uh, even religion are all about experiences of like-minded individuals coming together for a common goal. Now, brands are looking deep into such communities and saying, hey, is there a buyer for me there? Is there someone who will eventually uh, latch onto my product and say, yes, uh, you know, while I was here to pray or while I was here to sing or while I was here to see my favorite act perform, I think I like this brand who was on stage, uh, who got engaged with me, who ex made me uh, you know, endure an experience. I got to touch, I got to sense, I got to feel what the brand stands for. It, it stands for me and therefore I think I would buy that brand. So bringing people together to experience art, music, sport, entertainment, with a common goal for wholesome experiences that will lead to memories and recall is what is the context of most sponsored events today. Today's events are all about storytelling and brands want to weave themselves into these stories. Today's events are more about customization and most events are built around brands and communities and not the other way around. There is no charity, there is no goodwill anymore. Uh, there is no social status. It's not about, you know, I want to be recognized in society as a goodwill ambassador and therefore I must pay into an event to be seen and to be heard. No, it's about buying. It's about saying, if I am there, will I get to sell my brand? Will I get to reach out to my customer? Will I be able to impact him? Will I be able to create an impression? Will I be able to convert him for life? Today's sponsored events are not about how many saw the brand live or not about how many experienced it live. It goes much beyond that spectrum. So today it's also about how many did not see the event but still experienced the brand, albeit offline. How many got a chance to hear about the brand? How many got a chance to see the brand uh, even though they were not physically present at the event? How many got to experience it off air? Uh, how many got a chance to understand what the brand stands for? How many got a chance to participate in experiences that were not confined to the venue, 
but were extended beyond it in the form of social, uh, online, radio, television, and many other multimedia options that were available as a part of the marketing of the event. The paradigm shift to partnership from sponsorship is what is the key learning of this session. Sponsorship is today an outdated word. I think you should delete it from your dictionary because today's uh, communication or today's engagement of brand who is a buyer and an event who is a seller is about partnership. Brands are coming to events to engage and partner and talk to a unified audience. Talk to an audience which resonates the same feeling that they would to the brand which they want to buy or to the event which they want to buy to attend. So any ticketed event or any uh, attendee event or any invite event today where it is engaging with an audience, remember they are selling a proposition to the invited to come and be a part of that particular activity. And here is where the brand is looking at saying the guy who comes or the, or the person who comes and attends this event, is he a potential buyer for me? How can I tell him my story in those three hours that he's going to be engaged on this event? How do I immerse him in that experience, which is the event and subtly push in my uh, product and tell him that I mean the same emotion as what the event means to him and therefore he should buy into me. So today brands partner events. Uh, today brands bring in their experience and merge it with event experiences. Today brands partner, to, partner with events that talk to the same set of buyers or consumers. Today brands invest in events to build a consumer base. So it's not about saying I would be a part of this event only this year, but it's about saying that I will join you this year, build a level of uh, acclimatize, acclimatization with my audiences, repose my messages and come back the next year to the same audience and repose again and connect with a newer set of people and engage again. So I want to keep the conversation going. I want to be recognized with the events uh, imagery and every time somebody recognizes that event, he recognizes it as a event which is owned by the brand. So today, if you look at uh, a filmfare awards, okay, uh, the most easiest record name is of a brand which was typically not allowed to sell in a consumer market. It was a taboo uh, brand which came uh, in the form of chewing tobacco. But today it, it, it still is remembered uh, as one of the key associations with, the, with that set of film awards. If you look at the Mumbai Marathon today, uh, till a very long time, and in fact, uh, till very recently, it was known for its association with one of the leading international banks. Um, and that was Standard Chartered. So it, it was by default called the Standard Chartered Mumbai Marathon uh, or the Standard Chartered Marathon. Uh, it's only recently when Tata took over, it now is known as the Tata Mumbai Marathon. But again, uh, the kind of resonance that Standard Chartered created over the years with the word marathon and they use that same leverage to talk internationally so whenever it came to running or whenever it came to running and the concept of running in a city, be it Singapore, be it Boston, be it uh, UK, be it Dubai, be it Mumbai, uh, Standard Chartered was synony synonymous uh, with running and running the marathon. It was all about challenging the human spirit and getting on the road and running for good. So uh, here for good was the line that Standard Chartered used and when it got associated with uh, the marathon, it, it got that line extended to saying running for good. So it associated the concept of running with goodwill, with humanness, with kindness, with, with the concept of uh, 
doing community services and it got a lot of NGOs also engaged into the marathon and thereby raised funds for them. So not only did it leverage its branding purposes, but it also leveraged its CSR initiatives uh, using the marathon as a plank. So this is what we call about partnership with events. Brands today are looking at a much bigger value chain benefit uh, over conventional, uh, you know, pay money, get the few logos, be seen in a few places, be heard in a few places. It's not about that. It's all about a wholesome experience. It's all about saying, I want to be a part of that whole story which will be told from the time the event is announced to the time the event ends and even go beyond it. So the factors that lead to a buy-in from brands today is profile of attendees. Who is going to attend this event online and offline? What kind of audiences are going to be engaged? On what kind of mediums are we going to engage? So if it's radio, is it prime time radio or is it late night radio, which the youth listens to? Uh, what is the reach and penetration? How many people will you reach? While events are one to many, brands are looking at events to today reach one to millions. Because while the venue is confined to a certain space of people, the world out there in terms of communication outreach is far bigger. So today on Instagram, if I am talking through a celebrity influencer, I'm talking to millions of fans. Today, if I am on a uh, radio or a television program, I'm talking to millions of fans. So the purpose of connecting with audiences and the purpose of reaching out to audiences is not just about uh, just being there and showcasing the brand imagery, but it's also about reaching out to many, many people and connecting with them uh, on a larger scale. What is the price to reach or acquire each attendee? So today clients are looking at cost per target. If I'm spending one rupee, okay, how many people will I reach in that one rupee? So for every rupee spent on a brand association, clients are looking at both tangible and intangible benefits of reach and penetration and the cost of acquisition which would be required to uh, engage with each attendee and tell them about the brand. How integrated is the events ideology to that of the brand? So if I am vibrant, if I am youthful, if I am uh, uh, something that is uh, more social, uh, if I am going to be something that is rebellious, does the event speak the same lingo? Does the event talk about the same attributes? So how integrated are the attributes of the event and the styling, look and feel, uh, engagement patterns, uh, distribution patterns, uh, uh, performance patterns, visual patterns of the event, and how similar are they to the brand's own attributes? This becomes again a deciding factor for many brands to buy into an event. Also, most brands, as I said in the earlier slide, also is saying, how will I enable the brand to build a long-term association? So as I said, it is about community buy-ins. So today, if I'm engaging with an event, I am looking at it as a long-term perspective because I want to keep coming back to this event. I want to keep talking to the same audience and I want to keep talking to new attendees and then get them into my brand world. That is where I'm looking at sustenance. And if after the event, if there are opportunities to communicate again with the same community, using the event as a leverage, then I am all the more happy to buy into such events, which are talking pre, during and post events. So what is the future of brand associations? Brands will only invest in experiences that are used or perceived valuable to its community of buyers or prospects. Brands will not put in money on events that don't engage their buyers, okay? So if the buyer community and the attendee community is similar, brands will get associated. 
brands will look at how well does the event story pan out and how does it resonate not only its own experience but also the brand's experience in all its forms as i said pre during and post event brands will look at how events continue to communicate with its attendees and fans building a lasting bond today if you look at a classic example of the spoken fest which has been done by commune uh, this particular event has been built around engagements which led to the spoken fest and post the event they have continued to do smaller events to build smaller pockets of community so while spoken was relegated to mumbai and delhi today the chapters of spoken in the form of the community which commune created are resonating across uh, the indian uh, landscape so whether it is a event in ahmedabad or whether it's an event in bengaluru or whether it's an event in uh, uh, indor they have been doing smaller versions of spoken and the brand continues to sponsor continues to get associated with this event thereby leveraging and milking the community and keeping the voice uh, and the share of voice alive with its audiences this is what in true sense is what brand associations and the longevity of brand associations is going to be in the future so when we talk about events when we talk about experiences remember uh, sponsorship is today an evolved term the term is brand associations brands will get associated with events only and uh, only when they see a audience which is a buyer uh, of their ideologies of their products of their services they will want to continue to talk to this audience over and beyond the event they will want to engage with this audience on a long term perspective and if this engagement is going to happen on a continuous basis there is going to be a partnership that will evolve into a long term association so look at sponsorships look at brand associations as a cell of your shining stars your events are your stars which will shine only and sell only when you look at storytelling with a brand integrated into your story so thank you so much for joining in and i wish you all the best god bless and god speed